be moving in and out quite fast now for the rest of the program, so you might want to hold your applause to the end or even wipe yourself out. <laughs> the parents and the children were so pleased that these new sisters had the ability to teach the Irish that in 1894, they purchased a huge bell and had it engraved to the Sisters of the Order of St. Benedict from the children of St. Patrick's. The bell at one time called the children in from the playground, called them to mass, called them to activities at school. But the bell now stands in our cemetery at St. Benedict Monastery, where some of those first sisters who came to Eau Claire are now buried. Those of you who may come to St. Ben to the College of St. Benedict will see that first bell in our cemetery. And brings now as we walk to the cemetery to bury our sisters when they die. <coughs> the sisters who staff the grade school realized in time that they needed a high school as well. It was the forerunner to Regis High School. The first class started in 1915, and by 1931, it was a four-year high school. It was fully accredited by the University of Wisconsin. <laughs> it meant that more sisters had to come, which they did. Eau Claire was seen as a great place to teach. It also meant that more housing was needed. So a building was erected where piano lessons were given on the first floor and the sisters resided on the second floor. However, it was not built so very well. It was cold in the winter and hot in the summer, so it became to be known as Breezy Point. <laughs> Since St. Patrick's High School could not accommodate the students from all the parishes in Eau Claire, it was decided to build a central Catholic high school, and Regis High School became that reality in 1953. An article in the diocesan paper in November of 1953 was entitled, Regis, the School the Teachers Built. Now, that article included with the story to the point of a real thing that happened, a story that had significant financial implications. Father Paul, who later became Monsignor Paul and Bishop Paul, was the first principal. He was meeting with the architects of Regis High School and two of the sisters who taught science here, one biology and the other chemistry and physics, were there with him. As Father Paul spoke with the architect, the sisters were reviewing the blueprints. And one of the sisters quickly noted three mistakes, which might have cost the firm $10,000. The architect was amazed at this, and he turned to the sisters and said, only one with an engineering degree in combustion would have found that mistake. I have that degree, was <laughs> sister's response quietly. The response was made by, yes, Sister Maxine, who also had a pilot's license. She was the first sister in the United States to hold a license to, to fly. She taught aeronautics to the boys in high school shortly after World War II in a government program to encourage more pilots. The picture here shows Sister Maxine <coughs> about the middle and also shows Sister Valeria. She's to the right of that. She's pictured in the middle. Sister Maxine will have many stories that were washed about the building, about her manners of discipline. She came from a family of wrestlers, and there were times she was quite physical in her manner of discipline, and quite unlike the rest of the sisters. But she also had a famous garden for a number of years that was close to Regis, and no one touched anything that grew in that garden. But Maxine was famous for that. 
you can ask your grandparents or your aunts and uncles about Sister Maxine, wonderful teacher. Uh, eventually was grounded because she had a heart problem, but she continued to teach aeronautics as such. Fourteen sisters actually moved to Regis High School in August of 53. It was a literal move to the high school, for they lived in classrooms improvised into convent quarters. Some of the sisters slept on army cots. Somebody who was helping them move went down to Camp McCoy and got army cots for them to sleep on. Others slept in designated unused classrooms. They ate in some of the closets on second floor that later became supply rooms for the biology lab. Another closet was a kitchen which had no exhaust system. So smells would waft through the entire school as the faculty and students knew what was being served for every meal. The fall of my first year as a student at Regis, they were still living in these conditions, and yet they were joyful and caring and helpful to each and every student. It was that example that attracted me to enter the community and join these sisters in my senior year at Regis. There were about 20 sisters, eventually, five or six priests, and about four or five dedicated other men and women who taught at Regis in those early years. Uh, we're going to head a little bit here. The sister on the side was Sister Ina, and when you go into the library, look toward the workroom. She slept on an army cot in the workroom. The sisters did this for seven years. During those seven years, there were some very great fun times here at Regis High School as well. I recall the community was rather large, and so we would come here for our summer retreats, but it would be on an army cot. And at the time, I was one of the, I was one of the younger sisters, and I recall that my army cot usually ended up in the library <laughs> under the sign that said fiction. <laughs> it's understandable that finances were tight, and the sisters felt that, it, that reality often. The priests and the lay faculty received their salaries first. If there was enough money left, the sisters were paid. They received less than $90 a month. There was not enough money to build a convent, so until January of 1960, when a convent was finally built, the sisters lived in the school with very little privacy. Sister Valerian, yes, pictured here on the left, was so glad to be able to use the closet where the sisters have had their kitchen, for now it was her biology equipment storeroom. It had been intended as that from the very beginning. I'm going to introduce you to Sister Benedict, who's third from the left there. Wonderful teacher. The other science teacher to her right is Maxine. After years at Regis as a teacher, as an administrator, as a counselor, Sister Benedict went on to use her skills with incarcerated men at Kettle Moraine <coughs> Correctional Institute. And through her assistance, many an inmate was able to get a high school diploma. Some went on to college. Along with the sciences and math that were very well taught here at Regis, uh, especially under the capable and delightful tutelage of Sister Margaret Michel. Margaret taught math here, um, trigonometry, algebra, advanced algebra, all that whole area that she did, but she was a great scholar, and that was very, very evident in the way she taught. She went on later, and she was at, she got a master's degree in math, but then she always tells the story, she had PhD work at Marquette University in philosophy area, and she was just about ready to defend her thesis when she was notified that she had been elected prioress. So she said, you know, all my research would have been only important to my teacher and to my mother. So she never finished that area. 
but a brilliant woman, she went on her love for scripture can be well attested to by many of the adults who are here. She taught many adult classes in the parishes, and for 12 years she was working on the diocesan school of biblical studies. Margaret went on and in many ways influenced that. To this day, she's extremely important that for us. Thinking of the Ludwig Chapel you now have, the sisters' first mass at Regis was a case of improvising. The altar cards were propped up on cans of duplicating fluid. A crucifix was attached to the base of an athletic trophy and this was placed on three rings of Nakusa bond paper. <laughs> it was a mass of thanksgiving for the school being built. The sisters were there. The sisters were always there to support athletics. And through a variety of supports, they were limited in number just for the guys at that time. The school was designed to accommodate the sisters watching basketball games from that hallway above the gym where you see there are kind of um, shutters that go back and forth. Um, they could, the sisters could, could support the teams from there and delight in the many winnings at that time. Eventually, the sisters were able to chaperone the students going to state basketball tournaments, which tended to be yearly events. Many delightful stories came out of those trips. How the wonderful, how wonderful that the athletics at Regis has grown to include many more sports and even women. Besides athletic accomplishments, there were a number of national and state honors that the students received. Sister Dennis, who was director of the business department, took one of her, one of her students to New York City to compete in a national typing contest. That was in 1962. It proved to be a memorable experience for Sister Dennis. While there, she received a phone call that she had just been elected the next prioress of the community, so she knew what she was in store for when she got back home to Eau Claire. And Sister Monica also taught in the business department. She had several students who won state awards for typing and shorthand. Eventually, she was also elected prioress. With her business background, she served as community treasurer for many years. And then, following a year at St. Louis University, preparing for hospital chaplaincy, Sister Monica held pastoral care positions at St. Joseph Hospital in Marshfield, and as many of you know, at Sacred Heart Hospital here in Eau Claire. Just as once she had a big heart for her students, so did she love her ministry with the patients. She was known for her personal and prayerful presence, as well as a very hearty laugh. Who would not want to spend time just being with her? Is Mr. Peterson still here? Yes. Okay, Mr. Peterson. We are all teachers. We know that our time got we got started a little later. Uh, what do we do about we can run through this very quickly? We don't want to throw the whole schedule off. We are on schedule. We keep going. We'll keep going. Okay. Then we're going to move then from the business department to the art department that is still very evident here. Sister? The art department of Eagles was under the direction of Sister Alice Rita Keegan who had her master's degree in art from Notre Dame. Unfortunately, she never signed or dated her artwork, but there is great possibility that she worked on the logo of Regis High School, as seen in the main, at the main entrance of, our school, of your school. When Father John Paul, the first principal of Regis, was named Bishop of La Crosse Diocese, he also asked Alice Rita to design his coat of arms. Many of the extracurriculars that you enjoy here today were begun at Regis by some of our sisters. Sister Janet Mayhew and Sister Jerome Foley, for example. Sister Janet taught English, speech, forensics, and theater, and took many students to state competition where they excelled. 
One of her students went on to be the director of theater for Cranbrook School in Michigan, and he is here today. I shall name him Chuck Jabu in the back. Chuck had one of his students, yes, yes, thank you. The best is yet to come. Chuck had one of his students recently perform on Broadway in the award-winning production of Hamilton. We are so proud of you, Chuck. Chuck Bowie this morning was the server for the first mass that was offered here so he probably knows about the duplicating fluid cans. <laughs> also in the teaching department was Sister Jerome. Sister Jerome taught debate, and I'm sure she would be grateful to know that one of the extracurriculars at Regis now is a mock trial. Some of her students went on to become lawyers, and one of them credits his participation in debate into going on in that field. How pleased Sister Larice would be to know the music, music program at Regis continues to flourish and travel. What an opportunity it must have been for a music department to travel to Nashville earlier this year. Sister Larice began the music department at St. Patrick's High School and continued to develop it at Regis. Like you, putting on concerts, musicals, for voice and instruments. The school's reputation for accomplished musicians that you are continuing has spread far and wide. We are grateful to the faculty, staff, students, parents, and alum, and all who have continued the strong education thriving in, here in Catholic and Benedictine heritage. It all started in 1892. How grateful we were to see on your website that you are beginning a partnership now with the Turbo University. A number of our sisters had done work there and graduated from that fine school. One of them taught here, and have, we've often taught there and made, taken courses there. We encourage you to continue your vision of love and learning, the desire for God, to care for Mother Earth and for all our brothers and sisters. Your core values speak of your living faith in respecting each other, in kindness and acceptance of everyone. They are the hallmark of Regis High School and of all Regis Catholic schools. May you go forward grounded in the tradition that you have inherited, and that may you share that tradition with those in whose church you lie. In closing, we have a message from the various sisters who are still living, but were not able to be with us today. Except in spirit. This first message is from Sister Mary Mavis. I taught grades three, four, and five, and sometimes the combination of these at St. Patrick's Sacred Heart and St. Olaf Parishes. It was my honor to accompany the students during their growing and development years. I learned as much as they did, I'm sure. Sister Mary Mavis, Olesby. And this is Sister Bernard Pike with her message. As I sit and reminisce about my 50 years of teaching first grade, many images of Altoona arise. 30 of those years were at St. Mary's in Altoona. The enthusiasm of the first graders brought fun in both our work and our play. <laughs> And this is from Sister Mary Jane Knoyer. She's a graduate of the original St. Pat's, and eventually she taught there. This would be St. Pat's grade school. I went to St. Patrick's school from sixth grade through high school. The high school students were great models for us. We beat the public school so often in athletics that they quit playing us. <laughs> Sister Patricia Ostrander, who once was referred to as Sister Connie. My English teacher was Sister Jerome Foley. 
I wrote an autobiography entitled From Safety Pins to Bobby Pins. She encouraged me to write, and I have poetry from the 1950s to 2022. the blessing that we would like to give each and every one of you, your families, all of the alums, in gratitude for carrying forward the tradition that our sisters started and that we have shared with you this day.